All right, let's cut to the chase. How do you create highly converting TikTok ads that you can also repurpose on your Facebook ad account? Well, from my experience, there's three elements. Firstly is the fundamentals. TikTok is a video platform, so video ads will definitely outperform any other type of creative. And people on TikTok consume the content vertically, so nine by 16 aspect ratio where you fill in all the four corners of the screen. You need to also make sure that your ad creatives are engaging. One of the ways to do that is by having a cut every two to three seconds or something happening every two to three seconds. This will stimulate the audience to view the whole ad engagement rate. And you want to make sure that the ad creatives look native to the platform. Essentially high-end production ads you want to stay away from. You want to make sure the content looks organic, CGC or UGC style ads. Now implementing just the fundamentals won't make your ads highly converting. I mean, there is a possibility, but it's the second and third element that actually plays an important part. The second element is the sourcing and the production of the content that you will use as your ad creative. And the third is the sales sequence or the sales psychology behind your ad. And that is going to be the main focus of today's video. So let's get started. Hey, I'm Mo and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we talk about creative strategies for Facebook and TikTok on here. If that's something of interest to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Okay, so the second element, which is sourcing and producing content for your ad creators. As mentioned earlier, organic content is what works best on TikTok. And it seems to be the case on Facebook ads as well. And there's actually a term for this, organic link and content. It's called CGC or creator generated content. Some marketers call it UGC as well. Essentially, these ads look native to the platform and don't scream, I am an ad. So there's three stages to the sourcing and production of CGC. The first is the outreach. I'm not gonna talk much about the outreaching process because that's a whole video in itself. But if you guys do want me to talk about that, drop a comment in the comment section below and I'm gonna get back to you. Second is briefing the content creator on the type of shots you want them to shoot. The third is getting the content back, revision, and actually making an ad out of it. The third stage and the third element, <laughs> quite a few numbers here. The third stage and the third element, which is the sales psychology, go hand in hand. Stick around to the end of the video and it will all make sense. How do you brief a content creator for the type of ad creatives that you want to create? Now, a lot of marketers, including myself, make this mistake, which is briefing the content creator to create complete ads. Now, here's why this is a problem. See, TikTok is ever evolving and there's always new things happening. There's always new trends, new songs, new dances. There's, there's so much going on and that's the beauty of it, right? So if you get a content creator to create an ad that follows a trend, that's sick. But then a week later you have another trend and then the week after you have another trend. And you will eventually get into this rat race of, you know, briefing the content creator to, you know, jump on new trends and, and it becomes time consuming and also quite costly because if you are in this game, content creators aren't cheap. So how do you maximize the content that you actually get back from these content creators? The key word is repurpose. And this is how it kind of works. Every single ad creative, from my experience, can be broken down into shots, right? And there's always a couple of shots that are repetitive. For example, the product display shot. This is a shot within which you display your product to the camera or the content creator basically displays the product to the camera. And then you have the product demonstration. Again, it demonstrates how you use your product. And third would be the testimonial. You get the content creator to review your product. I've got a video where I talk about the five types of shots that are in every single ad creative. But yeah, once you've got all these three pieces of shots, you can then repurpose these shots to follow trends. Let me give you an example. Say you've got a day in the life trend, all right? Now within the day in the life trend, you've got a couple of shots where the content creator wakes up in the morning and they do a couple of things and then they get into the sales sequence of using your product and demonstrating your product. All of the goody goody. Now if you've already got the product display shots and the product demonstration shots and you've also got the testimonial, for you to then pick up on this trend all you need is one or two extra shots to then combine those shots within your ad to create that trend. Essentially by doing that, every time there's a new trend, you only get the content creator to shoot a few shots, which one is extremely cost efficient and second will save you a lot of time. However, there are a couple of things that you do need to bear in mind. For example, if there's a day in the life trend and you've got shots from a content creator where 
they're using your product outdoors, then it wouldn't flow well. And the storytelling behind your ad would just look absurd. So yeah, do bear that in mind. Also, if this video gets 50 likes, I will be sharing with you guys the exact brief that I use for content creators on my Twitter page. So hit that like button and head onto my Twitter page and hit that follow button if you haven't already. Breaking down the shots will allow you to repurpose content and always keep up with trends. Now, once you've got the shots back, you then need to kind of put those shots together to create an ad. Now, when it comes to creating an ad, I see a lot of marketers making ads that entertain the consumer, but doesn't actually sell. So here's a couple of marketing frameworks that you can implement. The first is the PAS or Problem Agitate Solution. So you start your video with a problem, you agitate on the problem, and then you give the audience a solution, which is obviously your product. The second type of framework is ADA attention, interest, desire, action. So you get the user's attention, you hook them in, you bring them into the video with a really strong hook, and then you create the desire. The desire element is based off of, you know, our basic human needs. If you want me to go in, in depth with the, the ADA framework, again, drop it in the comment section below. I would love to break it down. Another framework that I like to use quite a lot is the feel felt found, which is, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, and this is what I found. So yeah, make sure that your ad creatives have a sales sequence. The idea of you running an ad and you know spending money behind it is to get people to convert or get people to take an action. If it if your video just entertains, then yeah, it's cool. But is it really achieving the end outcome that you want? Think about it. So yeah, once you've implemented obviously the basic fundamentals and you've optimized your sourcing and production of content and you've also implemented the sales sequence, the ad creatives that you put out there have a really high chance of converting. And that, my friend, is how you create highly converting ad creators for TikTok and for Facebook. But yeah, that's all from me for today. I'll catch you in the next one.